Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be creating a cool looking neon text scene inside of DaVinci Resolve. So let's take a look at the preview and get started. Right, the first thing we'll do is drag in this brick texture image. I'll put the link in the description so you can just uh, download this and use it inside your project. As you can see, this brick texture is kind of too much saturated. So after this media in one, we'll add a color corrector node. Let's take a look at this and we'll just reduce the saturation and also reduce the gain amount as well. And we can also change the little bit of lift as well. So we have this nice looking dark uh, brick texture here. And after this color correction node, we are going to add a, a vignette. Click on add. Let's take a look at it. And this is how it is going to look. Um, so I think the default values look fine, but you can of course change the size and all that stuff right over here. And uh, yeah, that is our background. So we can just keep it on the side for now. And let's just drag in our text plus and start creating our neon text. So we take a look at it. This is how it is going to look blank. So we just in the text field type in our text. We're going to type in neon and the font I'm going to choose is called moon and it has this nice rounded uh, edges. So I like that a lot. So I'm going to just increase the size a little bit. And also we can change the font weight. I'm going to set this to light and yeah, I'm kind of happy with this. So yeah, let's move ahead. Let's go to the shading tab over here and we already have our first element selected and it is enabled. So let's select our second element and uh, make sure that it is enabled as well. And let's just change the color and uh, create sort of a pink color. Of course, you can change it to any color that you want. Uh, and I'm going to just increase the thickness a bit, something like that. All right. So now what you can do is go back to your text field over here, the text tab, and you can right click on it and click on follower. And then we can select the modifiers at the top and we'll change the order and set this to random, but one by one. And we can increase the delay amount as well. All right, so nothing really happens for now, but we need to go to the shading tab and we are in our first element over here and uh, we can just animate the opacity. So I'm going to right click on it and click on modify width and I'm going to select the perturb option. And uh, you can see that we have something going on in our scene. So let's just increase the strength over here. I'm going to also right click and click on options and show and uncheck checker underlay so that we can see this a bit more clearly and if you now play this you can see that we have this nice flickering animation going on you can change the wobble you can change the speed and all that stuff and you can even keyframe these uh, properties as well if you want to do so and come up with some really cool animations so i'll just uh, make a simple animation real quick so yeah i think that is looking pretty okay to me so i can just maybe increase the speed a little bit and the strength as well now as you can see the flickering happens only inside the text the white area which is the solid part of the text i want the flickering to happen on the outline as well which is the pink color here so again we need to go to the follower one and as you can see we have applied this opacity animation on the element one over here so we need to select element two, make sure it is enabled and we have to apply the same opacity animation on this uh, element as well. So I'm going to right click and since we already have our perturb animation, so I'm going to go to connect to perturb one and click on value. And now both of these will have similar animation. It's pretty cool. Now after this text one, we can add a soft glow to this. Search for soft glow, click on add and let's take a look at it. And I'm just going to straight away decrease the radius like so. All right, so I'm going to create another copy of the soft glow. Control C and Control V to paste it. And on the second soft glow, I'm just going to increase the glow size. Something like that. And maybe a little bit of gain as well. So you have an animation like this. Right, that is looking good so far. Now what we can do is uh, we have this state in which the neon is turned on, but we need to also create a state where the neon is turned off. So in order to do that, we'll just simply copy this text one over here 
Control C to copy it and paste it below, like so. Control V. And if we split the view for a second and we take a look at our text one, the original one on the right side and the copied one on the left side, you can see that both have the same animation, right? But uh, what we need to do is on the second text over here, we need to right click in the text and select remove follow one. So it won't have any animation on it. So after this text one, we'll just add in a color corrector again, click on add, take a look at it. And we'll just reduce the saturation and also the gain as well, right? So this will represent our uh, off state of our neon light, all right? So now what we can do is if we right click and click on options, check underlay because we need to apply our drop shadow. So after this color corrector node, we'll apply drop shadow to this, click on add. And we can now see the drop shadow here. If you set this to off you won't be able to see it so we go to options and check it and in the drop shadow we'll change the settings over here so for example we'll change the blur and the drop distance and the angle as well so we'll set this to 90 ish All right we can also change the strength and since this is the innermost shadow it will be much more you know much more stronger so you can just leave the strength at the maximum and maybe we'll just increase the blur a little bit like so and maybe the drop distance as well now we can duplicate this drop shadow control c and uh, control v to paste another one and let's take a look at it and this one will be a little bit softer so i'm going to reduce the shadow strength and uh, we'll increase the blur a little bit and we'll just increase the distance a little bit something like that all right so now what we can do is let's connect all of these together that we have created so far so if i just connect the background with the text over here and uh, this will result in this merge one and if we take a look at it this is how it is going to look and you can see the um, background the texture is in front so i can right click on the merge and click on swap inputs um, and we have our text in front but as you can see the size is still 3000 by this value over here so what we can do is after this media in one, we can add in a, a resize, click on add, and now it should be 1920 by 1080. And now we have uh, this flickering effect. Now we need to connect it up with this uh, off state, the neon off state of our text. So if I simply connect it up and we'll, this will result in merge two. And if we take a look at it, you can see that nothing really happens, right? We are viewing this node still nothing even if we right click and click on swap inputs you can see that the the node uh, the off state of the neon will come on the front and that's not what you want right right so to fix this what we have to do is simply move this background and just cut it from here Control x and paste it after your text right under like so and now you can get rid of this merge too we don't want that here and uh, we simply connect the text with the text using this merge right so if you take a look at it we, we have this nice text animation uh, we have the on state of the text and then the off state as well now we can connect our background with this merge like so and if we take a look at this merge too it's right in front so i can right click on it and click on swap inputs so now we have the background we have the on state of the neon and the off state as well and that's exactly what we want Right, that is looking pretty cool so far now what we can do is we need to add uh, some elements to this such as dust particles and some wires um, so let's just do that and for the to add the wire what we can do is let's add in our background node real quick and if we connect it up with this merge this will result in another merge take a look at it and on this background one we'll add a poly line or polygon mask like so and we just simply draw our shape so i'm going to create a polygon mask like so i'm going to zoom into this and you can just create it pretty randomly like so so i'm just going to do this real quick and once you have it then you can go to the inspector and increase the border width like that and you can make it as much thick as you want it to be now we can select these uh, nodes these points over here and you get these handles and you can make them 
smoother like so all right you can just stretch them out move them anywhere that you want and do the same thing with other points over here as well all right so i think the border width is too much so i'm going to reduce this a little bit like so all right now we have our wire but as you can see it's right in front and i uh, want this to be behind the text so if we change the inputs in the merge tree let's see if that fixes it no it doesn't so again we need to change the order of the uh, nodes so i'm going to cut this from here Control x to cut it and we will just paste it before the background over here so i'm going to select everything over here and this is our background right and i'm going to just paste it before like so and i'm going to connect it up with this merge like that now if we take a look at it on this merge 4 right click on it let's just view this first and you can see that the wire is in front still in front i'm going to right click on it and click on swap inputs and now it should be behind the text so now if you take a look at the merge over here you can see that the wire is now behind our text over here right now after this background node what we can do is we can add a drop shadow to this as well so search for drop shadow and click on add and we'll just change some settings such as the blur so that we can see where the drop shadow is we can increase the strength and we will change the drop distance like so and let's just increase the blur again like that so we just keep playing around with this uh, drop shadow to get the desired look uh, and again you can go to the poly polygon over here and you can increase or you know decrease the border width over here but for now that is looking pretty cool now what we can do is add in our particles to this now you can create these particles using the p emitter inside fusion as well but let's just keep it real simple for now and use these uh, particle uh, the overlays over here so i'm going to connect it up with this merge 3 take a look at merge 3 now you can see that our particles are in front if they're not then chances are you have to click on swap inputs so once you see them in front then you have to go to apply mode and set that to screen and also we'll just reduce the blend amount like so all right so we have our particles in our scene that is looking pretty cool so this merge tree search for transform node xf click on add and on this transform node take a look at it we'll create a simple animation a scale animation so i'm going to create a keyframe on size go to the very end and increase the size like so all right so we have a simple scale animation on this uh, text effect so after this transform node we can add in a camera shake click on add and if we take a look at it you can see that it will be quite intense so what we can do is we can change the overall strength let's reduce that and see if that fixes it it does a little bit we can also reduce the speed as well and yeah that is looking much better so maybe i'll just reduce the speed and the overall strength again yeah there you go uh, you have a nice looking shake inside your scene so that is just about it that's how you can create this uh, neon text effect inside fusion you can finally connect this up with your media out and render out your animation so that's just about it. I hope you learned something new. If you did, then please make sure you leave a like and also subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.